Great, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of Startup Journey. Today, I have a new guest with me. Her name is Lisa McDonalds. She is a successful author, motivational speaker, TV host, radio host, podcaster, blogger, mentor, personal development coach, and most importantly, she is a mother. She has, she has a podcast called Living Fearlessly with Lisa McDonalds, and we can hear us hear her on on C Suit Radio and Contact Talk Radio Network. She also has her television show Living Fearlessly. A broadcast and broadcasted online on 365tvnetwork.com. I would like Lisa to tell us more about it. So Lisa, over to you. Tell us more about you and introduce yourself to us. Well, thank you, Ashish. I want to first thank you for inviting me and seeking me out for this wonderful opportunity. Very gracious of you. Um, so the nuts and bolts of my story is I embarked upon becoming entrepreneurial in 2011, 12-ish as a result of a change to my marital status. And so it was very clear that once my children were to become a full-time school aged, and at that time they were three and 18 months old. Uh, so I was working with a bit of a five year window in which to garner an income, um, knowing that I had to be self-sufficient. And so I decided to become entrepreneurial because once upon a time in my prior vocation, uh, I had been a senior manager slash director in social services. So I'd always been immersed in the world of personal growth, personal development, always had a business mindset, always was building teams from the ground up, um, you know, interviewing staff members, um, worked with pretty much every population of people within crisis management. And um, so I took a look at my transferable skills and I thought, okay, what can I do that's going to be conducive to my circumstances of now being a single mom, primary caregiver at that time? And I thought, okay, well, I've always been a writer. So I started with children's books. I had written a succession of four children's books back to back, um, was successful in getting them out to corporate. I was doing regular um book signings at the Canadian um, big bookstores like Chapters, Kohl's, Indigo. And, uh, and I was doing direct sales and I was shipping them across the world through my distributor. So I've got books that were purchased through Australia, New Zealand, um, many places within the States, Canada. And so as a result of trying to get more exposure on my books, I had created my then first ever website. As a result of my website, I had been sought out by Cameron Steele, who's the network owner of the Contact Talk Radio Network. Uh, and uh, I'm now embarking upon my five year anniversary of doing radio slash podcasting. Guests and I were heard in 145 countries, 220 TV, radio, terrestrial satellites, and the potential for millions of iTunes downloads. Um, and then probably approximately three years ago, Jeffrey Hazlett, who's the CEO founder of C-Suite Network, C-Suite Radio being one uh, division of business under the umbrella of C-Suite Network, he kindly reached out to me, saw what I was doing over on the Contact Talk Radio Network, saw the kinds of consistent top tier thought leaders, influencers, um, who I was consistently showcasing on my program and he wanted me to be a part of his network. So the combined listenership for anybody who I'm showcasing on a weekly basis is in excess of 8 million people. And so I knew that I was going to turn this into a business model. I knew I had to pay my dues. I knew I had to hit the pavement. I wanted to go after a lot of these uh, notable household name people, not because of their stature, but because once upon a time, through their material, their content, their books. They were very instrumental in my own healing journey for things that I had gone through. Uh, so this was my opportunity to invite them onto my platforms in which to publicly thank them for their contribution to my journey. Um, and also to learn from them as an entrepreneur, a fellow entrepreneur. And so I've interviewed people like Deepak Chopra, Jack Canfield, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Um, I've interviewed Damon John from Shark Tank, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. Um, Kevin Harrington is actually one of my sponsors, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so it's just been an absolute wonderful journey. Uh, and then I got sought out by Ariana Sorry, I could go on and on. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's a very inspire, inspirational journey that you have had till now, starting from like 2011 and um, due to some personal reasons, you started off 
and then uh, getting the website done and uh, have being a writer for four books doing a podcast doing a uh, television show this is like uh, not everyone this is like a dream for for most of for most of us are here and what i want to understand from you is how did you so you were not doing this stuff before it all got started in 2011 and what was it that what was that push either external push or your emotional internal push that made you take this decision hey i want to be self independent mm-hmm. i can do this myself mm-hmm. because you didn't do i believe you have not done a similar thing at this scale prior to this and i want to understand how, how did you initiated that uh, initial start and what well- led yeah and and two things i'll say to that ashish so because of the hat the hats that i wore and the roles that i fulfilled once upon a time in my prior vocation i was always the person who got interviewed so and i did extensive interviewing to build up my teams and performance appraisals and interfacing with federal and provincial government um so i had never been a stranger to media um i was always comfortable in front of the camera i was always comfortable to be quoted etc um so again that's part of my transferable skills which i adopted and incorporated into the world of entrepreneurship um oftentimes people will talk about passions and i am a licensed passion test facilitator uh i'm i'm very much about passion But I think a bit of a misnomer that's associated with that, and this is just my humble opinion, is I think purpose is not indicative of passion. I think purpose in most of the people who I've interviewed and including my own self and my own story within my own journey, it was birthed out of desperation. I needed to figure out how I was going to provide for my two children. And of course, because I embarked upon doing something I thoroughly do enjoy and I am immensely impassioned by, passion was not, passion was secondary. Desperation was primary. And so when you lump that all together, and of course, I'm very staunchly clear on my purpose, which is to uplift you to fear less and to live more. And I think people get immobilized by fear. I myself, once upon a time, have been immobilized by fear. The people who I worked with for 25 years in social services for their circumstances of what they had fallen upon in terms of hard times, they were uh, oftentimes immobilized by fear. So I think it's, it's one of those things, um, one of those emotions, one of those mindsets, uh, which we can all identify with, we can all resonate with. And so I just really got clear uh, for myself, first and foremost, I had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I had to level up instantaneously. And where a lot of people get caught up in the ego, well, who am I to think that I'm worthy of write, writing a book? Who am I to think that I'm deserving? Who's going to pay attention to Lisa McDonald? Well, I'm paying attention to Lisa McDonald because I – it's a miracle to even be here. And one of my mantras is we're all going to die and we don't know when that's going to be. And so, you know, I really embrace the gift of life. I don't squander time. I don't squander opportunity. And I really believe as a servant leader, which I've always been, that this is what I'm compelled to do. Uh, I'm very staunchly emphatically clear on that. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's really a uh, very, uh, live in the moment kind of story you don't and the second important thing that you mentioned was it was more of desperation than correct the drive to do passion so most of us already have passions but we don't push the limit we don't we don't do what is in our uncomfortable zone um, so so would you like to talk more about the desperation why did why did that desperation happen because of certain circumstances well because, or was as it i mentioned not there before Yeah, as I mentioned, the change to my marital status and the fact that that propelled me instantaneously into single parenthood. Um, So now I was responsible for my bills. I was responsible for holding on to my house and doing the buyout. I was responsible for clothing and feeding my children. Uh, Not to say that their dad's not involved. We have a very good amicable relationship and we're both on board with the children coming first. But being the kind of parent that I am, I always put my children first. And so 
I knew that I had to garner uh, a living. I had to garner an income, but I also wasn't going to trade in all the level of money, time, and energy I'd invested into my own personal growth and my own professional development, um, which is why I got very exceptionally clear on my transferable skills and why being a single parent, it made sense that taking into account things like sick days, stat holidays, summer holidays, et cetera, I, you know, I was always welcome to go back to my previous vocation, um, but it just was not conducive for crisis management and it not being a nine to five job. It's like you only go when the crisis has de-escalated and when you filed all the paperwork to the ministry. Yeah. So, Aliza, uh, tell us more about the podcast Living Fearlessly and how, who do you serve, businesses or individuals and how they can get benefit from your service? Well, I'm very grateful. Every single guest that I've ever showcased in the almost five years of my having done this, um, it, they've been incredibly stellar. Um, I'm My first priority is always to the loyal listeners and to the podcast subscribers because they're the ones who put me on the map. And I do receive, which I'm very grateful for, uh, daily metrics, which uh, gives me rankings for where I am in podcast world across the 145 countries in which we're heard. Um, so it's a major marketing opportunity, visibility, exposure uh, for all of my radio guests who either have a product, a service, a plight, a mission, um, a business model that they want to get out there and impart to the rest of the world. And so anybody who has a marketing budget uh, wants to put their money where they know they're going, where it's going to convert. And so I've been very fortunate that I'm now a 95% referral based business. Uh, and I have showcased on probably a handful of occasions people who have continuously come back to me and they've been showcased a second, a third, and in some cases even a fourth time. One, because they too are very committed to their own growth. So they always have new content, new products, new services in which they want to take to market. And what better place to do that with a show like mine where you're heard in 145 countries. Um, so yeah, it's it's been absolutely phenomenal. I interview entrepreneurs, startups, authors, TED speakers, TED talkers, uh, and again, anybody who's got a product or a service that they want to take to market. And I think the common denominator, obviously, within all of my guests, regardless of how uniquely different they are for what is signature to them from a branding perspective or a product's perspective, is for anybody to step out into the real world, the big world, and to level up and play a bigger game and take their product to market, um, that means you have to have overcome a lot of fear and a lot of self-doubt um, and a lot of self-deprecation -dep uh, in some cases. So um, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, amazing. Uh, Lisa, uh, what, what would be your message to all those who are suffering through some mental health issues right now or going through a phase of depression in their life. Um, with all these tools uh, available to us on social media and technology available to, uh, to all of us mostly for free, do you think there is shortage of opportunities in this world today? If somebody really wants to go in the uncomfortable zone and make a mark and I'm sorry, Miss Ashish. A shortage of what? Shortage of opportunities in this world today. Uh, on no. Online, online space available and social media available for us for free. No, I think more than ever, there's ample opportunities. I mean, it's very so, important that. Tell and us, I understand tell us how somebody who who is not, who's like almost uh, in a state of depression right now and doesn't want to has no opportunities available for him from the external world. How can he utilize social media like you have done it for yourself? Well, I mean, again, coming from the background of social services, I'm no stranger to people who are on the spectrum of depression um, and mental health issues and challenges. Um, so I just think it's important, especially, I mean, we're very fortunate in today's day and age with all the technology that we have and with the mass media um, and, and also being more consciously aware 
Uh, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of, there's a plethora of different resources that people can reach out to tap into in their local communities to access supports. And I always strongly encourage people to do so because to, to recognize that you're in a place where you need help and you can't do it on your own, um, that's a strength. It's not a weakness. You know, so I always encourage people to reach out. We don't know what we don't know. And we've all been in a situation or a circumstance and in, in some cases, multiple situations in our lives uh, where we've had to rely upon people, whether it be family, friends, community, um, support groups, uh, 1-800 numbers, um, different social service agencies. So I would highly encourage people to connect and to tap into that. Um, but especially for people who are, are looking to embark upon becoming entrepreneurial or want to take an idea, an initial conception, and have it come to fruition in the way of a tangible product uh, or a message or a brand, um, you know, you've got LinkedIn, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got Instagram. And I, you know, most people, and I've been very fortunate, the majority of people that I connect with who are like-minded, People are only too happy to assist because we all don't know what we don't know. And we're all operating at not only different levels of self-awareness, but we're at different levels within the game of entrepreneurship. And so people who have 30 years in, 20 years in, um, who are more veteran and have had like long stud, uh, longevity and success, um, you know, people are humbled when people reach out and say, look, like I've been following you. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Can I pick your brain? Do you have a few minutes? But I also encourage people to mentor up, you know, mentor up, get a coach, make sure that you're coachable um, and get on the right path. Align yourself with the right people because when you do that, the right opportunities show up. Great. Uh, so if somebody wants to uh, associate with you, how do they connect with you on social media? Uh, I'm all over the place. I'm on every social media platform that's imaginable. Um, you can Google me. Um, I can be found on my website, which is uh, livingfearlesslywithlisa.com. My email address is lisa at livingfearlesslywithlisa.com. I'm very comfortable putting my phone number out there publicly because I do most of my business over the phone before it converts to anything else. Uh, so my phone number here in Canada is 289-684-7707. I'm on Skype. I'm on the Contact Talk Radio Network. I'm on C-Suite Radio Network. I also do coaching and mentoring. Um, so anybody who wants a, an initial consultation for mentoring, anybody who wants to talk about the possibility of being a prospective guest showcased on my international platforms, please feel free to reach out. I would love to help and I would love to connect. Great. Uh, that was a very inspirational story of yours, Lisa. And I'm sure there are people who would get inspired by listening to you and uh, how you came out of self-doubt and built your own empire and now taking it forward each and every day in the right direction. So thank you very much for sharing your story with Startup Journey. And um, I wish you all the good luck. And I'll share your contact details in the description below. People who are watching us, please uh, like, share, and comment on the video. And let's keep the Startup Journey going on. Thank you, Lisa, for your time. Thank you, Ashish. Much appreciated, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.